What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Great X Gaming. I am Jax, and we are here with something new and dogs, but we are here with Conarium, a Lovecraft inspired game that I once jumped into for about 10 minutes and was pretty cool, but then I decided I wanted to play it on my channel. So here we go. New game. Now, uh, as far as I got in this game, was wandering around on a ship. That's all I know. So there's definitely going to be some weird, creepy shit. But what? That's bus up to. That's up to us to find out together. Your life is only a set of pictures in the brain, among which there is no difference betwixt those born of real things and those born of inward dreamings. Oh. Okay. You know what? We're gonna play with control. Nah. I have a feeling I'm gonna need precision because, uh, I don't know. Just gut instinct. So let's. Pardon? What? 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 Oh, I'm not dead. Hello, hand device. Hello, very strange, spinny electrical thing. One thing I do and do. There we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, quick. Oh God, there's quick save. Oh God. Um, move inventory space. Run is shift. Flashlight is F. Journal is J, equipment is C, interact and toggle notes. I don't have a flashlight. <sighs> Observation notes of the fourth initiation session. All participants consumed the diverse, diversahe mixture five minutes ago, and they've entered some kind of altered consciousness. All of them are now vaguely mumbling in their sleep, like they are chanting something, but the sounds are not conscious. They seem restless. I detect movements in their limbs, and as always, I wonder if it is because something they are seeing actually, actually seeing beyond. 7.15 p.m. As always, the device is humming and glowing, but this time the atmosphere is different to the previous sessions. Whatever the reason for this might be, it feels almost like this fantastic device is signaling something in a code I don't recognize. It is becoming more and more stressful to be alone here in the midst of this cold, dim, and incense-filled room. 719. It sounds to me like the intensity of the subject's mumblings is much stronger now. Colors and shades are dancing on the walls with the rhythmic ins and outs of the device. I can hear the wind howling outside. Maybe a snowstorm is approaching, or something even worse. 7.24 p.m. Exactly five minutes and three seconds have passed now. They have drifted beyond my area of expertise and guidance. I cannot do anything further except wish for their safe return. I assume that is the mixture. Hey, there's my flashlight. Nightside and beyond. Quali, Raid, Zora, Special Plant. 
I am sorry about the loud noises, by the way. Uh, 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 okay, it's just a simple compass, it appears. Let me boop. There we go, that's better. Uh, I'm sorry about the loud noises. Uh, there is company downstairs again. Always, always a joy. Oh, hello. Opo out expedition handbook. That, uh, okay. Antediluvian shamanism. Hmm. Seems like a bad plan. Okay. Okay, I need to turn that back down again. Hold on. Let me see if I've got an option for it here. There we go. Let's bump it up to 75. There we go. That's better. Hello? Anybody here? Where is everybody? Okay, well, considering the fact I can't pick up the medicinal supplies, that gives me hope that it's not a... Uh, game I'm going to be attacked in. Circuit breakers. Auxiliary power needs to be enabled manually from outside. Oh, I did not mean to do that. That's interesting. I could just open my journal like that. Stop those bloody sessions. Attention for the crew members who are having sleeping problems. Examinations conducted regarding the increase of the accidents happening recently lead me to believe that the led me to believe that the reason behind those is some kind of a tense cabin fever. Symptoms are insomnia, strong headaches, seeing visions, and hearing voices. Crew members who suffer from the above symptoms are needed to refer to me personally for a thorough checkup. This will also be the main topic of the general meeting that will be held tomorrow after lunch. This issue poses some serious problems regarding the safety of life and sustenance of work, so must be taken heed of soberly. John DeWitt. Strong storm is expected to hit in the next two weeks. It is utmost important to take all cautionary measures and inform the responsible personnel when going outside. Please be aware that radio connection during the base and the ship may not be available during this period. Okay, here we go. Journal. I'd better find a crew member. I woke up from a series of blurry nightmares, isolated inside these somewhat foreign walls. In one of my pockets, I found an empty notebook in which I am writing my notes. I can't remember anything other than there should have been others here with me. The names Dr. Faust and Dr. DeWitt are lingering in my mind now. Additionally, trying to delve deeper into thoughts get deep, delve deep, delve deeper into thoughts gives me sharp pains in my already throbbing head. I better find a crewmate and find out what's going on here as soon as possible. There's the weather notice. This is interesting. I'm hoping... Oh dear. Am I... Am I... I thought I was on a... Am I on a ship? I thought I was on a ship. I'm... I mean, it's, it's feasible that this is still a ship, but... I... Okay. Okay, thank you. Good to know that there is a limited... Uh, one of the few times I am appreciative of invisible walls in games like this. Because it's a, it's a, it's a clearly a point-and-click adventure game of some format. And those, when dealing with massive spaces, tend to get very difficult to manage. I'm getting flashbacks from... Uh, uh, stories Untold, I think it was. So we are on an Antarctic base, but crew member, are you talking about of the base, or...? Oh dear. Oh, 
Oh! Stubbornness and sheer blind fumbling pays off. I have some tape. Uh, of course it is. Okay. Ah, I have solved a puzzle. Achievement, Sparky. Okay, can't go that way. That I also appreciate. Well, power's on at least, so that's a good sign. Yeah? Okay. Ow. Okay, well, I guess back inside. I thought I was on a ship. One of the composite sculptures we've come across during our initial field trips. It has an open third eye on its forehead, as well as inside its hand, which I think indicates some kind of state of knowing, because allusions to all knowledge and elder things recur all the time in almost every base relief we've encountered so far. All this leads me to believe that the... Oh. Okay. But no, you're not gonna... Excuse me, sir? 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 It's locked. If this coat is just right here, where is he now? Nick, I like Gogol the portrait. Okay, locked. I've got a radio. <laughs> you fucker. <sighs> I was told there weren't jump scares. You've lied to me, game. I mean, reviews. Even though the jump scare was... Oh, dear. These nightmares have become unbearable. I still see the same man in my nocturnal visions, but now he is holding something in his hand, which I believe to be a lotus flower. We seem to be continuing this grave and serious conversation again and again, but I still can't remember the contents. During working hours, sometimes I hear his voice through the radio. It is not in the form of meaningful sentences, but like some unconscious mutterings. I'm afraid to tell anyone about this, for I hate the very idea of the suspension I will probably be facing. strange device that was already on my left arm when I came around inside the meeting room of the Upwat Antarctic base. It comes as no surprise that I don't remember anything about it. Standard walkie-talkie, the torch I found. I don't like the sounds. Oh, okay, they're just gloves. 
I am inclined more towards the notion that our nocturnal visions are not just faint and fantastic reflections of our waking experiences. Every time I pass into a state of dormancy, somehow, I can explore while I am dreaming the vistas of grandeur. An alien prospect, an unnatural disposition, so vividly expressing the outer extent of this world I have yet to discover. If only I was endowed with the artistic skill to describe my visions. All I know is that this has all become evident after the Canarian sessions have started. Even though I am not the one of the participants, I am somehow affected. I feel I am absorbed while in an unconscious state into the oblivion, crossing the line between the wall of sleep. So jumpy. The fuck? Purple. Purple stuff. Found a key. Jonathan Johan DeWitt. Locked. Okay. Ugh. Why is it so hazy? Ooh. Okay, I found a note explaining the purpose of the expedition. I know we're close to what we have been looking for. During the adaptation se adaption sessions we hold here in the meeting room, adaptation sessions. I feel a guidance of some sort, something pointing towards the destination we seek. This could mean we are now in sync with the ancient source. The wearable canarium we're carrying on our left arms connects and thus receives sensations from the same ancient source. And sometimes I wonder where there has ever been another soul during human's relatively brief period of existence who was able to achieve such a feat. With some shunned and elusive sources I have gathered from around the world, it is said that the extraterrestrial species, the Elder Thing race, built it after passing through a stage of mechanized life in other planets. But the purpose remains unclear. Oh, wait. Oh, I see. Journal. Nothing on the journal, of course there's not. I'm... Huh. That is too fast, so... I, I don't... Huh. 
After our haphazard and momentarily, momentary aerial exploration of the unholy, utterly alien cyclopean maze of square, curved, and angled blocks, we could detect most of the locations revealed by the previous Miskatonic University expedition leader, Professor Emeritus William Dyer. But what we are looking for here is not there inside the haunted Shugoth ruins. According to various sources, it should be in the much older ruins beyond the Elder City, right on the edge of a mountain beyond the Mountains of Madness. It was built over a location deeply shunned even by the Elder Things, and built long before the colossal city Dr. Dyer and his team explored. Now we set foot upon lands no one has ever seen before, a vast mass of dry land around the South Pole, which rose from the primal waters when the old ones seeped down from the stars, a place so evil most of the arcane sources hesitated to record it at all, while some murals within the Elder City depicted it with obvious repugnance and trepidation. Oh dear. Photoreceptors. This is... Oh dear, this is about putting a brain in a machine. Oh dear. Okay, well, we're gonna leave this episode off here. Uh, if you like the video, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you wanna buy me a coffee, I'd greatly appreciate it. Uh, the link is down below. And, uh, thanks for watching. Later, y'all.